Welcome to A Chat With Heart Podcast. I'm your host, Christina Martin. I'm here to guide us on this journey of heartfelt and uncensored conversations with friends I've met while touring my music in Europe and across North America, and people who have life experience that I genuinely believe we can all learn from. Our personal stories have great power to heal, influence, and inspire. All we have to do is show up for the conversation. If we just talk about it, we could shut up. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another Chat with Heart. If you don't catch my social media updates, I'm going to tell you right now what's up with our 2022 Stay With Me Europe tour. My wonderful booking agent in Germany, Thomas, we've been working with Tom for a decade now. So Tom had scheduled over 30 performances in Germany, Austria, the Netherlands, and many of those venues were places that we go to to perform every year. There were a lot of new ones this year, and due to Omicron and the ongoing uncertainty of the pandemic restrictions, on top of the unbearable stress I was experiencing, Dale and I decided it was best to cancel the tour. Some of you might be thinking, what is the big deal? Why don't you just go? And other listeners are probably 100% understanding, you know, on this decision to cancel. We were looking forward to having our home base in the city of Dachau as artists in residence for the three-month tour. I thought, okay, well, if gigs get canceled or if we get sick, we have this home base. You know, I thought that I had planned everything like to be stress-free and COVID proof. Um, And there's no way I could have predicted how I would feel the closer it got. And uh, there's no way we could have predicted the spread of this new strain of the Corona variant. And um, it just got to be a lot. We were looking forward to seeing all of our friends in Europe We were looking to performing in person again, over 30 shows. We were looking forward to earning revenue again, but still, it was the right decision for us to make. So we moved on. I'm feeling better. We're focused on being creative from home, which means uh, for me, slowly releasing my new music and growing my Patreon community to help me continue creating meaningful content and uh, working on this podcast. And for Dale, he's producing music for other artists. He's helping edit and co-produce this podcast. He's got some mixing projects coming up. And we're both totally grateful to have worked so hard over many, many years to create this space in our home so that we can do what we love. So, hey, here's an invitation. We've got our first virtual concert happening February 18th, 2022. One of the venues we would play in Germany every year has partnered with us for an online event, Kultus das Café, just outside of Dusseldorf. And so I hope you can join us. The link to register is at christinamartin.net. You can watch the replay of the event if you can't make it live, but I really hope you can join us. It's going to be fun. There's going to be a Q&A session for us to interact. And when you register, you can immediately start voting up the songs on our set list uh, that you want us to perform. There's a poll set up. And you can start asking questions even before the event starts. Uh, It's really great. I run all my online events through Crowdcast. So check that out and we'll see you online. So the Europe tour this year is canceled, but we'll be okay. Hopefully we'll do a few more online events. And we'll be back in Europe to perform in the future when it's meant to be. My little heart beats. You have been bringing me so much joy. I see your comments on social media in response to the new episodes. I've been collecting all of your heartbeat hotline messages, and the response has been overwhelmingly positive. Some of the messages have even brought me to tears, like good tears. The theme song, Talk About It, which I wrote specifically for this podcast, is 
now out on all the places you listen to music. And many of you have chosen to buy the song on my Bandcamp, which is awesome because artists make more revenue on Bandcamp. So now I'm going to introduce you to someone who I worked with when I was doing the pre-production for this podcast. Terrence Taylor is a storyteller, a change agent, a father, and much more. I met him the summer of 2020 when he was filming performances at the Neptune Theater in Halifax, Nova Scotia. In working with him on that performance, I hoped we would work together on something in the future. I didn't know what. Then I had this opportunity in the fall of 2020 to hire someone in Nova Scotia to consult me on my podcast production plans. So knowing Terrence was already an experienced podcaster, after I checked out his website, terrencetaylormedia.com, I approached him to be my mentor. I'm really lucky to have met Terrence, and I'm thrilled to have him as a guest on A Chat With Heart. Were you always on a path to, you know, life learning or did it happen sort of incrementally for me, for example, I I remember like when my father died, that was like a, whoa, everything changed. And the Mm. course of my life, I mean, my life would be so different. There were many other smaller examples. And I imagine for you, there are many, 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 but like, was there, Mm. was there some real pivotal shift? Yeah. I was I was playing ball at Saint Evex, and I was cool, and I was with the cool kids. But I was really a follower, and I was around a bunch of testosterone-driven alphas that I didn't necessarily identify with that leadership style and that like means of being. Although I played sports my whole life and was around those people, but like now you're 20 years old walking around a campus and it's just weird it's different right so i was i wasn't really myself through that experience and then i left that experience and the people who i thought were like my people were basically like oh you don't want to play ball well fuck you buddy and i chose to get my education degree because i chose the path of learning people were like ah fuck you and that was one that that was the first moment where i was like oh man like i just gotta do me I had to rediscover who I was, which was a lot of self-help books. The Motivation Manifesto changed my whole life. It was traveling. I went to Costa Rica for two weeks with a suitcase full of books. And I had a hammock by the pool and was four hours on foot from the, the market and the beach. Like I was in the jungle for real, for real. And yeah, a lot of self-discovery, a lot of soul searching a lot of figuring out who you are when I left that experience I came back to Nova Scotia and I said I'm starting a business and I, from there I moved to Charlottetown and that that was it that was 2015 and I haven't looked back since then I just spent the last decade not knowing who I was and being somebody that other people thought I should be oh you're tall you should play basketball like I've heard that so many times and it just becomes who you are and it's total bullshit so unlearning all of that and going through the process of figuring out who you are. I'd say that was kind of the first bit and then fatherhood and not being with your son's mother and going through that experience and moving on when you shouldn't have moved on and figuring out who I was. Again, more time with self. This COVID shit, it it just shut down. All right, cool, you're in the house by yourself. Think about it. George Floyd being murdered. Yo, okay, I have a voice. I have to make change. I have this little boy who's about to go through this whole life cycle here in Nova Scotia. What's going to be different? I'm working with Kirk Johnson's son. He's in my mentorship group. If you're familiar with Kirk Johnson and the 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 the, the racial incident of in '89 when he was pulled over, mad times and racially profiled, and it's it was it's it's nuts. But his son is in my my youth group. He's a professional boxer, but he's all he's known just as much for being racially profiled as he is for being a professional boxer. It's sad. What's different? This kid is 16. What's different? What's different since then? oh shit, okay, so if I'm in film and storytelling and podcasting and my kid is 16 and nothing's different, the fuck are you doing out here, bro? (laughs) All of this pandemic shit, all of this Black Lives Matter, fatherhood, another crazy story. My son was born June 13th, 2019. My biological father and my stepfather both died in the like year paragraphing him being born. Wow. I didn't speak to either of them. I didn't know them. 
Well, I knew I knew my my stepfather, but I didn't really know my biological father. Hmm. But the fact that it happened in oh, and around man. this time it was like shedding this old experience of black fatherhood. Yeah. And like really having the opportunity to step into my own version and create that and build that and see what I didn't have and go, yo, what are you going to do differently? And then going through a, a wild situation where it was like, huh, that wasn't the move. All right, what is it then? That's incredible. Yeah, it's nuts. Uh, what's your experience been like this new COVID year? <laughs> so the, the biggest thing that's changed is I'm a single man. It's, and it's, it's the best decision I could have ever made wow. because I was in a relationship out of fear of being alone and going through this really challenging thing without this support partner. Right. Not identifying that I had support people. I just didn't have to fuck them. Oh, that's a good point. You don't, <laughs> you don't have to fuck anybody. No, you could be, no. you know, for all, you know, and I know you, you could be asexual. Well, that, oh, you mean like the, the oh, no, <laughs> oh, 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 sorry. No, you, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You need You're to amazing. fuck. You need it. Humans, human. Well, I mean, I won't speak for all humans. No, that's a great feeling. What do you mean? But the people <laughs> that have your back in certain ways, you don't sleep with most of them. Yeah. Well, um, except Dale, I do, I do, I do. Dale's one human out of how many, but how That's many right. people in your real life really have your back? It's not, it's probably not yeah. a, a ton anyway, but most of them, th that sexual interaction doesn't exist. And me as a person who, who went through not having a father around and like not seeing positive family black family dynamics i was like terrified of how i was gonna do that and yeah. so i didn't I, I just was like you know what let me find somebody and because i have a child now whoever this person is this has to be my forever person like i told myself a story yeah I told myself what my situation needed to be and in all actuality i needed to just sit the fuck down and just figure my own personal individual shit out and just sit in that and if that be the hardest shit ever I needed to just do that and I didn't do that and that just made things worse I'm out here trying to feed my own ego I'm trying to get this this outer feeling when it's like bro you need to just sit the fuck down just sit down figure out what you need figure out how you're gonna love on this little boy and figure out how to make peace with his mother so that he can have the best fucking life ever. Like, fuck all that other shit. Like, and that's, and then when I did that, I was like, all right, cool. So how many people do I really need? And I, I did a checklist and it was like, I got my three boys in my mentorship group. Yep. I got Rodney, my mentor now in the street. I got Lamia, who we're sharing the studio space with. I got my little guy, I got his mother. And I was like, I got that's my good. sister. And I was like, bro. That's a lot. I'm clean, I was cool. And they, but that's what I mean. It was like. I didn't need a, a romantic yeah. person. It was like, oh shit, I actually have what I need. It's like, yeah, bro, get a magazine, get on like porn is is the thing, but just get however you need to get it off, get that part of it off so you can so you can feel whatever like that is. Sure. And then just deal with because then it was like, oh, maybe I'll date and maybe I'll just like I'm not doing anything serious. And it's like, bro, you need to just not be giving that energy to anyone. Just keep whatever, because whatever that was, whatever text messages you, conversations you was late night high having with some fucking stranger you met on the internet, because yeah. you should just talk to, talk to your son's mother about anything for that same amount of time. Just do that. It don't even matter what it's like, oh shit. Okay. Write in a journal for the amount of time that you're trying to get some pussy on fucking Tinder, bro. Like, write Like, right. nah. Oh, oh shit. I'm really wasting a lot of time trying to find this feeling. I don't need none of that. I shut all that shit down, bro. Well, it sounds like you're you're identifying the distractions in your life and you're getting down to the real hard work. I mean, I remember when I was at the end of my first marriage and it was a good marriage, uh, but I went to a counselor, wasn't a great counselor at the time. Um, this was in my 20s. But one question they asked me changed a lot of things for me. And the question was, what do you want? 
you know, I was so fixated on what they were doing and what everybody else in my world was doing. And, mm. and I didn't know how to answer that. Has, has that question come up for you? What does Terrence want in his life? Yeah. Well, I want peace and I want change. Mm. That's, that's it because oh, I love that. I see my little boy and I go, how, how is he the best version of himself? He is me. So for him to have what he needs means I get what I need. I mean, and, and change personally, like there's there's a lot of a lot of elements of change in the personal life and the personal aspect and just growth and like being being alone and like going through that process. And yo, I got this little boy. And that's the that's what that's the beauty of it. Everything roots back to him. Nobody asked my father or my father's father, so my my grandfather, who I never met on my dad's side, um, nobody asked uh, them how they would raise their son to be the best version of themselves that they could possibly be. And uh, mm. do you do you think one of the best ways to do that is is to just model it, model the the change, model the peace that you speak of, or are there other ways? It was a leather belt that my grandfather used to beat my mother and my aunt and her brother, my uncle. And that was passed down to the firstborns or to the, whoever had the first child. So my mother had, I was the first child born. So she got the belt. Is the belt still a, around? I'm sure it's somewhere, but I don't want that shit. And now as a communicator for a living, I communicate for a living. Yeah. Why would I ever need to put hands on my child? Like, okay, oh, yeah. so you know, you know what that did? That actually made me afraid of you. And so now I moved out of fear. All my decisions were out of fear. I'm not going to do this because, oh, if my mother finds out, it's, it's like, that's why I was well-behaved. Because of that's, you were afraid of the, that's right. Yeah, that is interesting. Okay, cool. I got to where I got to and it made me who I, but like, it's that the, is that what I want? Yo, I want my son to be afraid of me. And that's why he's going to be a, like, get the fuck out of here. Could there be another way perhaps <laughs> to achieve well, and, the, you, the And same you said outcome. it, yeah. you said it, you said it in terms of modeling. There's like another cliche of like, do as I say, not as I do. And I think that's such bullshit. Like, you, no, you can't tell me you're doing something and then do some other shit. Like I'm watching you do this other thing. So your words don't mean nothing. It's why apologies I find really annoying. Like saying sorry, that's like this Canadian thing of saying sorry and apologize. It's like, bro, you fucking apologize for nothing. You, oh, my dog walked in front of you while you were walking on the path, who's sorry? That's what you value, of, like, that's what an apology, <laughs> Get, so so when something yeah. really happens, then, then what do you say? <laughs> yes, I I don't mind an apology when there's a there's a like a good explanation as to why the apology is mm -hmm. happening and that it actually cuts to the root of like there's a recognition as to why mm -hmm. you were wronged. Mm -hmm. um, so I really apologize that mm -hmm. I my dog walked in front of you because you you know partially sighted blind and I realized that you could have tripped over them. That's my bad. There we go. <laughs> Would that be a satisfactory apology? That's that's fair. No, that's that's hundred percent fair. But it's it's the overuse of the word. It's it's yeah. the same as friends. Like Facebook fucked up the word friends. Like who who are who are our friends? Like eh, anybody we know who has an internet connection that we can search. Like they're not friends. So it, it's it's that. It's like words become so overused that they don't mean shit anymore. So you can say whatever you want to say, mm -hmm. but if this is your, this, if this is how you act, if this is how you move, if this is what you don't say, <laughs> then all right, that's who you are. And so I, yeah, you're right. Through change behavior, through model behavior, through being able to see it and go, cause I, I'm me because of things I either did or didn't see. You know, I wanted to be this because I saw it. Or I want it to be this because I never saw it and I just want to be it. Yeah, curious. Right, and so if you, yeah, and so, if, but if you if you put that in front of somebody, what what's the alternative, right? True. We're going to build a school for Black people focused on, on art and business. That's not for me. That's because I looked at all the private schools in the area. I looked, I went through the process of being a public school teacher. 
all right, where's my kid going to go to school? Oh, yeah. shit. Okay, well, what I would deem as ideal here for him yeah. doesn't exist. Okay, so you're making well, it happen. You're making it gonna, happen. We're just going to create it and seeing how it, yeah, duh, it impacts him, but ultimate, ultimately it impacts everybody Black in Nova Scotia. Mm -hmm. And anybody with an internet connection, because the work that I do is rooted in production. It's rooted in storytelling. So we capture all of the stories of all of the stuff that we're doing. We document all the stuff that we're doing. It's blueprints. It's templates. It's, yo, follow this in the beginning of 2022. I am pitching. I am creating ideas. I am putting those in front of people who can sign really big checks and I'm going, you have to believe this thing I'm doing and I'm presenting it in a way that people go, yeah, sure. All right. And knowing that that is able to create the change that is needed here yeah, is epic. Are you talking about the school? Yes, the school, but also the relaunch of changing the narrative. The podcast. And yeah. Terrence, it's time to read questions from my favorite conversation Ooh. game, Fluster. Yes. This game was created by two friends, Devin and Walker, in Canada. And my little heartbeat listeners can buy Fluster at flustergame.com. And get this, Terrence, save 15% with my promo code, Christina15. Yeah. Maybe you should get a promo code. Terrence, Ooh, 99. No, you, no, no. Ooh, 99. 99%. Okay. I'll, I'll talk to Walker and Devin. They're actually going to be on the podcast. That's a big discount. Okay. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> and that uh, folks don't you go ahead and try putting in that code, but I don't think it's going to be activated anytime soon. Okay. you ready. Let's go. What type of things, Terrence, do you lie about most regularly? When people want to do something and I just don't want to do it. I'm, I just, I won't reply. I'll ignore it. I'll say, like, I just like no. lie by like, lying by omission. Like, yeah, not... like, yeah, like I'll, I'll see the phone ring. I won't answer. I know you want it, but like, no, I just, I just, uh, no, I don't, I don't like being bothered. And so I would rather, I just don't want to talk to anybody most of the, like, most of the time. I don't want to speak to anybody. Dude, that's so, why I email you so that you can just, <laughs> so that you can you, just answer on your own time. No, I don't want to tell you right now that I don't want to talk to you. So I'm going to not, I'm just going to, it's not lying, but it's, yeah, it's like, eh. you know what I'm hearing? I'm hearing that you're highly conscientious and you don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Yes. So that's okay. That's a fine yeah. lie. I mean, you're not, it's not like you're, or do you do this sometimes too saying, yes, I want to go for a walk in the park, go do it and then regret it. You no, just... oh no, no, you won't get that far. I won't do that. You won't get that out of me. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to leave the couch. So I'm not, you know, but you know what? Yeah. I'd so, say so, maybe, are you depressed, Terrence? No, I like my house. I, this yeah. COVID shit made me make my home so perfect that I don't I have to leave. I have a gym that I do everything I need. I have my workspace, I have a meditation room upstairs. Oh man, there's a, so many good fluster questions. Uh, here's one before I get back to, um, you know, the ultra serious talk, although this is all pretty serious. Yeah. What, what's something Terrence that still makes you nervous, no matter how many times you do it? <sighs> do you want some more time to think? I can tell you a story in the meantime. Do it. Yeah, do it. I still get nervous going online for anything, uh, live <clears throat> online concerts, recording podcasts, when I'm in it, I'm having a great time having a ball, but leading up to it, I kind of torture myself and get very nervous. And actually it's quite mm. similar for performing on stage. And my friend left me a message today because I was telling her how nervous I was about um, doing this, but it's not, it's really the right word I think is, is excited, mm -hmm. excitement. But mm -hmm. so I think, I think sometimes we don't know the difference. And once you mm -hmm. recognize that it's kind of a little easier to absorb. Oh, it's a good sign. I'm excited. 
I care. I do care. I care so much. You know what? It's not as deep walking outside when it's just began to snow and it's a bit icy. Cause I'm a big dude, yo. I'm You're a big dude, five. yeah. Like I, I got a lot further distance to travel, yeah. which means more pain. So I'm like, I got boots on and everything. And still I'm a little bit like, eh. the last thing I want to do is bust my big ass. No. Okay, so you're a father first and foremost. You're also a storyteller. You yes. you tell stories. You help other people tell their stories. Yeah. You're a change agent in your community. Yeah. Yeah. One of the ways you tell stories is through podcasting. And you've been, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, podcasting since 2017? That's correct. I know changing the narrative is a big part of what you're working on right now. Yeah, and it's the... the it's the relaunch of that. That was a podcast out of people who didn't know what they were doing, just doing something and, and just being active. And through that, I learned how to do a thing. So we started working together during the pandemic. Basically, I hired you to help me figure this podcasting shit out. Uh, mm -hmm. I was terrified. Um, <laughs> I was terrified. And, um, you know, we worked, our process was involved for about a month and a half. We would meet on Zoom and consult intensely. You would give me some homework. Yeah. I would do that homework. I love homework. I love a challenge. Yeah. And it was like meaningful. It wasn't like, um, it didn't piss me off or anything. And we came up with this production plan for the podcast and it's, I still have it. It looks great on paper. And then I realized I had to do like a lot of personal work. Part of us working together, you know, some stuff like got unearthed. Yeah, it did. And I am also grateful for that because I am a different person in some ways because of what I had to go through, you know, a difficult year and, um, and processing some deep family shit. And I wasn't done with you. Um, I mean, I don't ever want to be done with you, but I we don't asked, have to be. <laughs> thank you. But I asked you to listen to some of my first episodes to let me know how I was doing. So I want to talk a little bit about that because there's some interesting things that I grabbed from your notes that I think maybe the listeners, there's a lot of people who want to get into podcasting because of, because of the power, I think, I believe in it that podcasting has in in communicating mm -hmm. stories one thing you suggested was that I, I do give my my listeners a chance to maybe get to know me a little bit more well I want to know what you think about this I thought of like an acronym for chat in the chat with heart mm -hmm. and then there's a story tied to it uh, so so C uh, Christina H had a T tail Christina had a tail and do yeah. you want to hear that story, Terrence? Please. Okay. So, um, sorry, before you go, I yeah. have a, I have an acronym for a show that involves the word tail in it also. I think really? that's great. Yes. Oh. 100%. Okay. Yeah. So, it's called tales. Yes. It's parents and leaders exchange stories. That's brilliant. So Christina had a tail. Mm. I have a scar on my backside and until I was like in my early twenties, I was, I didn't really notice it. Yeah. And then I asked my mother, what is this scar on my butt? And she told me the story about how, when I was young, uh, her, my father and her went out one night and left me with a babysitter. And apparently the babysitter had a party, left me in my diaper. I got a diaper rash that led to this scar. Like it's a pretty big scar. And so for years, I just kind of like believed the story. And then my husband, Dale and I were chatting and like, just my, my family history, like, you know, my father, uh, who's not, not around anymore. I mean, uh, just a little tidbit about him is that he, he, fre he frequently lied and it was sort of a bit of a profession. And, and, uh, and then I, I, we think that it might be that I had a tail surgically removed and that there was so much shame around this and that, my mom maybe even just believed this story that they created um, so that, you know, they wouldn't have to admit that they had a baby that had a tail. So you're more than just a human baby. Yeah. Like that, 
I, I could have had like a superpower tail that just like a, like a beaver tail or something. And, um, in any case, uh, that's so anyway, <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm working on the letting people, I think people will get to know me a little bit more over my over, you know, I want to be doing this podcast for a long time. So over time, but, but I'm working on it. And I've always got you yeah. in the back of my head saying like, give him a little more Christina. Yeah. Terrence Flint. And it's a segment. There you go. And Acronyms. It's a segment. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's part of the show. It's part of building the the chapters and the 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 pieces so that it, you can bring multiple different random things together in a way that's succinct and cohesive and makes sense. No, it's great. Exactly. Okay, so now I want to ask you, how can I avoid derailing my guests? Um, the difference between interrupting and interjecting. It's I find it hard with Zoom and on so hard. Zoom so hard to do it in this space i just try not to do it like if i can that's great advice just try not to do it just don't just don't just... say anything because it becomes clunky because of the delay it's just how it works it sucks but it's part of how recording conversations on zoom when you're not in the actual human space with a person it's just what it is so if you can refrain and wait then you can say what you want to say without stepping on someone. If I know you're getting to the end of something you're going to say, I'll like, mm, or yeah, like I give those, but I kind of know when to place them. And that's a way to keep a, an element of back and forth going without you actually saying something meaningful to them. It's because when, because what I want to do is let you talk unless what you have to say either elevates or advances a conversation, then keep that shit to yourself. That's you wanting to say something. Check this segue. So I was listening to Changing the Narrative and listening to you and how you lead a conversation, guide, and interject. Mm. And I was, it was really helpful, and I need to practice it. And so I would like you to tell my listeners where they can find you to learn more about your projects, uh, also to hire you if they need help telling their stories. All the things, Terrence, like where where do you want us to learn more about what you do and to reach out? TerrenceTaylorMedia.com. That's where you can find me. And my website's free. It's pretty, just, it's low key. It's here's what I've done. And here's how to find me. And here's the three services that I offer in terms of video production, audio production, and workshops and education. But that's that's me changing the narrative.ca that's all going through a rebrand the changing the whole changing narrative is is going through a phase two and, and a rebuild the podcasts are on apple podcasts and spotify you can find them there and that's that'll give you the whole first season yeah and so from there it was partnerships with rising youth and they're based out of uh well they're based online but we they, they're they offer grants to young people to develop community projects so we're on the second season of talking to to those youth and and the community projects that they facilitated second season was black youth only i said nah if 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 i'm talking to people you gotta be black if they're anything other than uh, find somebody else so they said all right cool so that was even a cool part of practicing yo i want to here's my truth and i want to stand in it and, and being safe and having a safe space and doing that with clients that already you know this is like you said I've gained enough trust with the people that I work with that I can go, yo, here's what I'm going to do. And this, here's what you're going to get. And you're going to love it. Right. Yeah. Again, that took time, but it exists now. So that's been the second season of that. We're working on a film to, to promote that program or to, oh. to, to promote that, uh, that process of that Exciting. Grant application. So no, nah, it's a lot of, it's a lot of things. This So CTN is going to go through its whole reboot. I'd say 20, 22 into 2023 uh and it's gonna be exciting can i tell you about the, the one thing that i'm most focused on yeah absolutely please it's called it's called business resources okay and what it is it's gonna be eight to twelve part film series podcast with basically the behind the scenes of how we're growing ctn i love it teaching people how to build a business, giving the blueprint on how to build a business. Yep. Understanding how to identify the business resources in your community, whether it be business one-on-one and working with BBI or chamber of commerce and yeah. 
federal, municipal, and provincial uh, supports and how to access different uh, variations of those, corporate partnerships, community mobilization, how to tap into different types of businesses, financial literacy, right? And, and, and how do you build this thing? And, and given that blueprint, right? That's where I'm at. So black people shouldn't be scared of talking about big business numbers. Right. We don't, we don't have those conversations. Why? Because most of us don't get to that point. Yeah. Okay, so let's get to that. Let's, let's make closing 50K deals regular. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to, yo, we do big business. Let's make that a thing. Yeah. So that when we talk about money, when we talk about economic decision-making power, because that's what it is. Money is a tool to make things happen in your community, period. That's it. Yeah. And so we need to get used to getting money, selling things. We've been exploited since we left the other side of the earth. And so we have to be able to say, oh, Black Lives Matter? Okay, cool. So we want what's owed to us and more. <laughs> There's a level of accountability that is on us. We got dragged over here on ships. We went through what we went through. We made it this far. We don't get our just due. It's never going to be fair. Okay, we deserve more. I got you and I hear you and I'm with all of that. Okay, but what are we going to do about it? Yes, it sucks that we still have to do something about it. But if we don't, then either nothing gets changed or you let white people make decisions for you and then tell me how you feel about that result. Mm -hmm. Right. We have to, the work doesn't stop. It's going to take a lifetime. Terrence Taylor. I knew the day we met that it would be a privilege and a pleasure to learn from you, work with you. And this relationship has surpassed my expectations. And you know, I have high expectations. <laughs> you it. truly are a gem and I wish you continued success and selfishly. I hope we get to make more stuff together. Although you're too busy. Thank you. Talk okay. soon. Yeah. Bye. Here you bye. Say bye. Say bye to Christina. Bye. Say bye to Christina. Bye. Bye. Oh, bye. Estina. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Heartbeat Hotline. 1-902-669-4769. I'm the host of a Chat with Heart podcast, Christina Martin, and I'm so excited you called. Leave me your question a suggestion for the podcast, or a comment about this episode. Please be aware your message may be used on the podcast and social media. Tell me your name, where you're calling from, and it's also fine if you want to remain anonymous. Thanks for listening. Have a great fucking day. Hello, Ms. Christina Martin. This is your buddy, your pal, Melissa Churchill from Coal Harbor, Nova Scotia. And I just wanted to call and leave a message and tell you how proud I am of you finally moving forward with your Chat With Heart podcast. It's going to kick ass. It already is kicking ass. I really enjoyed your first episode with none other than the one and only Dale Murray. And I just have to tell you, I have always admired and loved you both together as a partnership um i've always looked up to it and felt that you guys are just truly a powerhouse together so i really enjoyed listening to dale's interview and all he had to say about his musical background his history um, even getting vulnerable and sharing some of his health struggles too. So, Dale, way to go. Christina, awesome job. And I'm just really thrilled for you. So have a great day, both of you, and can't wait to hear and see what the future holds. Oh, thank you, Melissa. Now, how can I feel bad about things that I have no control over, especially after receiving loving comments like that. And exciting news, I've asked Melissa to be a guest on this podcast soon. Melissa is a travel advisor, and I know a lot of listeners are itching to make plans to travel again. Melissa is the one to chat with about that, and we're going to get to know her a little bit more. So stay tuned for that episode. A Chat with Heart, produced and written by me, Christina Martin, co-produced and engineered by Dale Murray. 
check out Dale's website, dalemurray.ca. The podcast theme song, Talk About It, was written by me and recorded by Dale Murray. You can find it on all the places you stream music. Production plans for this podcast and season one are supported by the province of Nova Scotia's Women in Business Implementation Fund and the Creative Industries Fund. Special thanks to Terrence Taylor for mentoring me on hosting this podcast and really digging deep with me on my production plans for season one, which, let's be honest, Terrence, ended up being more like well-needed psychotherapy for me. To Crystal Seaberger at Sensory Friendly Solutions, thank you from the bottom of my heart for helping me learn how to be a more inclusive, accessible, and sensory-friendly human. Visit my Patreon page to become a monthly or yearly supporter of this podcast and my music endeavors. If you're new to Patreon, it's a membership platform that helps creators get paid. Sign up at patreon.com forward slash Christina Martin. For this to be a massive success and reach 7 billion people, I need you to share, rate, leave a review, and subscribe to A Chat With Heart on all the places you listen to podcasts. Wishing you, my little heartbeats, a great day.